So, let us talk about rule 19. Well, rule 19 is about conduct of vessels in restricted visibility. So, rule 19a says that this rule applies to vessels not in sight of one another when navigating in or near an area of restricted visibility. So, let us interpret. So, this rule is applicable when vessels cannot see each other and as soon as the vessels are in sight of one another, this rule will not apply. So, here we are having section 1, the rule are rule number 3 to 10 and that is in any condition of visibility. Then we are having section 2 when you can see that is rule 11 to 18 and then we are having section 3 that is when you cannot see in restricted visibility rule 19. So, basically uh, section 2 rule and section 3 rules, they are two distinct set of rules. So, that means if rule 19 is applicable, rule 11 to 18 are not applicable and vice versa. So, here we have the term in or near an area of restricted visibility. So, here suppose there are two ships, they cannot see each other and both the ships are in fog. So, both the vessels are in restricted visibility. However, there could be a case where the one vessel is in the fog and the other vessel cannot see. So, here this is the case that other vessel is in restricted visibility. So, that is also uh, uh, where the rule 19 will be applicable because uh, that says clearly when navigating in or near an area of restricted visibility. Okay, let me give you an example. Suppose you see the fog right ahead. So, you need to take precaution and need to uh, slow down when you see the approaching fog. Now, let us talk about rule 19b. Every vessel shall proceed at a safe speed adapted to the prevailing circumstances and conditions of restricted visibility. A power dyne vessel shall have her engines ready for immediate maneuver. So, keep your engines ready for immediate maneuver. You need to inform engine room, keep your engine ready. Basically, uh, this rule 19b is a repetition of the requirement which are given in rule 6. So, something more about uh, rules of restricted visibility. Actually, uh, there is no standby or giveaway concept for restricted visibility. Uh, both the vessels are equally responsible. Even for overtaking also, uh, this overtaking is not as per rule 13. All right. So, in any case, both the vessels are equally obliged. Whether it is crossing, head on, overtaking, these kind of situations do not exist in rule 19. So, let us talk about action in case of restrictive visibility. All you have to do, uh, just sound the fog signal, alright. Inform master, inform engine room and adapt the safe speed. Of course, uh, slow speed is not always a safe speed because uh, if you have reduced too much, then you may not uh, be able to steer. Switch on both the radars, ensure both the steering motors are on and you need to call additional personnel. Uh, well, lookout and helmsman cannot be the same person because you need to post extra lookout. Now, let us talk about speed adjustment. That will depend on uh, range of visibility, uh, the speed of the vessel, maneuvering capability, the traffic density around and any navigational hazards in the vicinity. So, accordingly, you need to adjust the speed. So, let us talk about rule 19c, which says that every vessel shall have due regard to the prevailing circumstances and conditions of restricted visibility when complying with the rules of section 1 of this part. 
So basically rules of section 1 that is any condition of visibility are applicable like uh, lookout, safe speed, uh, risk of collision, action to avoid collision, all these rules will be applicable considering the prevailing circumstances and conditions of restricted visibility. Oh, we can say uh, that uh, there is a much repeat of the rules which are given uh, from 4 to 10 in section 1 in rule 19 directly or indirectly. So, let us talk about rule 19D and it says a vessel which detects by radar alone the presence of another vessel shall determine if a close quarter situation is developing and or risk of collision exists. If so, she shall take avoiding action in ample time provided that when such an action consists of an alteration of course, so far as possible the following shall be avoided. Okay. We will discuss later on what has to be avoided. So, so first of all, uh, let us understand you need to detect uh, the object by radar alone. So, this rule applies if the target is detected by the radar alone and it applies only when there is a risk of collision. If there is no risk of collision, this rule is not applicable. All right. And this is going to describe what to avoid while altering course. It tells you this is what you should avoid. Actually, this is a summary of evasive actions as per rule 7 and 8. However, uh, these are uh, the rule 7 and 8 have the very general overview and here the rule 19D adds very specific guidelines. So, let us talk about recommended course changes. Actually, uh, what we are trying to achieve is to prevent ships from turning into each other and the both the vessels have to take action. So, here let us understand. Okay, here suppose there is a ship and you are having a target here uh, forward of the beam. All right. So, target is here or here. What to do? we need to alter course to starboard. The rule says clearly that avoid alteration of course to port for a vessel forward of the beam other than for a vessel being overtaken. So, if you are not overtaking and you see the target here or the target here, you have to alter course to the starboard. All right. Now, let us have uh, this one. Now, here there is a target here at the uh, above the port beam. Let me repeat here we have the target on or above the port beam. All right. So, here again you need to alter course to starboard because the rule says clearly avoid an alteration of course towards a vessel, a beam, or above the beam. Now, there is a target on or above the starboard beam. All right. So, there is a target here. What you have to do? Avoid an alteration of course towards a vessel, a beam or above the beam. So, you cannot alter to starboard. You will alter to port. So, in this scenario, you need to alter course to port. So, let us summarize. So, there are four quadrant. Quadrant 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, if you are having target in 1, 2 and 3, you got to alter course to starboard. However, if you are having a target here uh, in quadrant number 4, you got to alter course to port. As, as simple as that. So, action is to be taken when there is a risk of collision. If there is no risk of collision, you do not need to take action. And you need to take action as per the target position on the radar screen. Okay, here let me also repeat that for overtaking rule, rule 13 is not applicable because rule 13 says that any vessel overtaking another has to keep out of the way, but here both the vessels are equally responsible and overtaking vessel can alter course to starboard or port to avoid collision. So, here let me just uh, give you a quick review. 
suppose uh, this is the target and this was plotted here after equal interval it is moving like this so there is a relative approach by the way this is the relative motion and the ship's head is like this all right so the target will pass ahead there is no risk of collision you do not need to take action now there is another target here which is moving like this so definitely it is going to collide all right so you need to take action and the action will be broad alteration of course to port away from this vessel now let's talk about rule 19e and it says where it has been determined that risk of collision does not exist every vessel which hears apparently forward of her beam the fog signal of another vessel or which cannot avoid a close quarter situation with another vessel forward of her beam shall and shall what has to do let's uh, discuss it later on so this applies when the target is not visible on the radar screen and the fog is heard forward of the beam so what you are supposed to do is stop or slow down when you hear a fog signal of another vessel forward of the beam or if there is a vessel right ahead so here the other vessel is less than 2 miles actually uh, if you hear a fog signal which may not be detected by radar and roc risk of collision may exist secondly in fog there could be a lot of confusion by apparent bearing and distance of fog signal so a beam should be considered with a very broad perspective basically uh, this situation applies if the vessel is not having a radar and which is not function radar is not functioning or the vessel has not completed the radar plot or has radar optional but has radar operational but cannot avoid a close quarter situation with a vessel forward of our beam so basically uh, both the vessels are responsible to take action so now let's talk about the interesting part and that is the situation and here what you see there is a target here on the starboard bow so uh, you are a ow of a pardon vessel and the vessel is proceeding in restricted visibility and you observe one radar target at four points on the starboard bow all right now you decide what you have to do you need to take a systematic plot of uh, uh, to find the risk of collision first of all you need to determine whether there is a risk of collision so how much observation you will take so it is recommended that you will take at least three equal time interval observation so with this three equal time interval observation you realize that your target is moving like this all right so as per rule 19 a vessel shall avoid altering course to port for a vessel forward of the beam so in this case you will make a broad alteration of the course to starboard you will alter course to starboard alter course to starboard and start a new plot start a new plot that's it somebody may ask are you going to sound one short blast or two short blasts as a maneuvering signal definitely no because uh, the vessel on in restricted visibility is going to sound one prolonged blast at intervals of not more than 2 minutes when making way so quickly the situation is repeated here you see the target on the port bow and you take uh, systematic observation and at least three observation and then you see that this target is approaching like this okay and by the way this is the relative motion so the rule 19 uh, will be applicable and it says that you shall avoid altering course to port for a vessel forward of the beam so you have no choice but to alter course to starboard alter course to starboard all right 
and actually you will do a broad alteration and start a new plot. Likewise, you have the situation you see a target on the port quarter and uh, you take at least three observation so that you know where the target is moving at least three observation and you realize this target is moving like this. So, uh, how to avoid collision? Okay, as per rule 19, you shall avoid altering course towards a vessel a beam or above the beam. So, you will have a uh, option to go to starboard and start a new plot. Likewise, uh, you see the target on the starboard quarter and here you take at least three observation and you realize the target is moving like this. All right, the relative approach. So, as per rule 19, a vessel shall avoid altering course towards a vessel, a beam or above the beam. So, you will alter course to port and start a new plot. So, here there are two targets that is target number one and target number two and you realize the plot is approaching like this. There is a risk of collision. So, for target number one, that is the forward of the beam, a vessel shall avoid altering course to port for a vessel forward of her beam. So, you cannot go to port for target one. All right. And similarly, for the target two, you cannot go to starboard, you have to go to port, so you cannot even go to starboard. So, what to do in this situation? You will stop, take all way off and change the sound signal from one prolonged blast to two prolonged blast. That means, you have stopped, that is the two prolonged blast and continue to monitor the situation. So, here you are OW of a fire down vessel, the vessel is proceeding in restricted visibility, you observe one target right ahead. You start a systematic plot to find out risk of collision and after three observation, you realize that the bearing is constant, range is decreasing. So, as per rule 19, a vessel shall avoid altering course to port for a vessel forward of the beam. So, in this case, you are going to alter course to starboard and uh, start a new plot. So, somebody can ask, is it a head on situation? Rule 14, rule 14 will not be applicable. Now, let us talk about overtaking situation. So, you are uh, OW of a pardon vessel and you are proceeding in restricted visibility and uh, you see the target right ahead. You take three observations. So, one, two, three and you realize this target is the relative approach is like this and same way you realize that your ship's vector, the length of the ship's vector is much more. So, uh, basically you will overtake uh, this vessel and you can overtake from either side. And, uh, uh, you need to make broad alteration of the course and start new plot. You can alter on both the side. And of course, be careful rule 13 that is overtaking rule will not be applicable. Do not make mistake. So, now let us talk about this situation that the, there is the other vessel and this other vessel is overtaking. So, the approach is like this, all right. Uh, you have uh, taken at least three observations, you have plotted and the bearing is constant, range is decreasing. So, as per rule 19, a vessel shall avoid alerting course towards the vessel above the beam, for a vessel above the beam. So, in this case, uh, since the vessel is neither side of your vessel, so but right as turn. So, you can therefore alter course to any side. The other vessel is overtaking and you will expect the other vessel uh, will keep say uh, on the starboard side. So, this way uh, you can make broad alteration of the course to port and start a new plot. 
So somebody may ask, can this overtaking vessel overtake you from port side? Yes, if it is over, if she is overtaking, she can alter course towards starboard or port both side. So accordingly, you need to take the decision.